Hi everyone, it's Liam here from A Shot of Wildlife and in this video I'm going to tell you almost everything you need to know about the red fox. If you live in the northern hemisphere, in a city or in the countryside, the chances are likely that at some point you have seen a red fox. They're the most widely distributed carnivore mammal in the world and are found across the whole of Europe, some parts of Russia, North America, Japan, India, Northern Africa and Australia. Alongside this geographical range, red foxes are also found in a lot of different habitats. They are just at home in industrial city centres as they are among deciduous woodlands or along the coast. The reason for this is their notorious cunning and tenacity when it comes to finding food. They are renowned for their persistent attempts to break into chicken coops and are very capable hunters of birds, small mammals, insects and even amphibians. However, they are flexible in their diet and will also eat berries, fruits and scraps from people. Red foxes are around the same size as a small dog, around 50 centimeters tall at the shoulder and grow to a maximum weight of 14 kilos. That's 20 inches and 31 pounds in old money. They have ginger fur over their faces, backs and sides, down their legs and over most of their tail. They have a lighter white or cream underside and can have darker feet and tips of their tails. Red foxes have large ears with exceptional hearing and their long thin snout gives them a very keen sense of smell. Although people often assume a fox's sex based on its facial appearance, from a distance it's actually quite difficult to separate them. Males are slightly larger on average. Foxes begin to think about breeding from late December to early February when a male and a female will court each other, often at night time and usually involving lots of high pitched unearthly screams and squeals. After pairing up they stay together for three to four weeks and during this period they may mate several times. The female, which is known as a vixen, will then either dig or find a suitable place to give birth. This place is known as a den or an earth and after approximately 53 days she will give birth to between three and five cubs. These are born blind with short round faces and dark brown fur. The vixen will stay with them for the first two weeks keeping them warm and safe whilst her mate, the dog fox, brings a ready supply of food. After this the cubs are a bit more developed and she will begin to leave them alone in the den for longer periods while she also tries to find food to bring back for them. After four weeks the cubs start to venture out and regularly play and squabble with one another. This isn't usually too rough but during this time some of the cubs will be establishing dominance over the others and this social hierarchy can stay with them later into life. Over the course of the summer and early autumn the family group stay together but towards the winter around October or November some of the now well grown cubs will move away from their parents territory and begin to look for their own. It's during this time that they are most vulnerable to collisions with cars. Some of the young foxes stay with their parents throughout the winter and may even help them to rear their cubs in the following spring. Red foxes have a brilliant sense of vision with horizontal pupils the same as cats. They can see at night and have another adaptation for moving around in the dark. Alongside their sensitive whiskers around their face they also have whisker like hairs on their front legs that help them to navigate the darkness. Aside from cars Red foxes are also susceptible to mange, which is caused by a mite and can result in sore, crusty looking skin and patches of scruffy or completely missing fur. Their populations around the globe are stable and in the UK their numbers are slowly increasing. There are currently an estimated 360,000 of them here. They have an average lifespan of around 3 years, but one captive fox made it to a whopping 33 years of age. Well there we go, hopefully you learned something new. If you did, you might also learn something from this British Wildlife video. And if you enjoy that, subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.